get up, all right? Praise the Lord. And uh, there was one other thing I was going to say. Jesus, tell me what it was. Oh, well. It'll come back. Amen. No. Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, I just want to thank. We filled up the page, okay, with uh, advertising. Now, I was talking to them. We can do the back page, but they, see, the, the one page we did. Give me the book, please. One one book one we did was we filled up this raw advertising this one we, we could do this page but this one is a little bit different it's a 200 hour setup fee for them to do this one but we could fit another 12 of those so if anybody you know people who have businesses where you go to you have a business and you and you want to go up there we just like a one inch by uh two inch i forget how it was the other day but they're a hundred bucks and if we could fill up that page that would be even better. Amen. Amen. So you know people who are in business. Don't have to be you personally. I have one person gave anonymously. Don't even care about the square, which was good because that opened it up for somebody else to get a square because I thought I can get 10 on you. They said I can only get eight. So, uh, but God is good anyway, right? Amen. But if you have a business and you want to advertise with us, there it is. Yes. And the more we... The more money we get, the more we can, more mag uh, books we can get. Amen. Praise God. God is good, isn't he? If you have your old Bibles, open up to Matthew chapter 1. Oh, youth, you're dismissed. Sorry about that. They're all back there going. <laughs> but they were waving at me. Say hello. Matthew chapter 1. While you're turning there, let's pray. Father God, we praise you, Lord. We thank you for this time of the year. We thank you for the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Father God, I just ask today that we clear our minds and clear our hearts, prepare ourselves, Father, to receive the word of God. Father, if there's anything in our hearts that would block that, Lord, we just ask you in the name of Jesus to forgive us for any wrongs we've done this week to anybody, Father yeah. God. Or for anything we've done. Lord, and we praise you and we thank you for the word of God in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, you're Matthew chapter 1. Before we get there, I just want to, you know, well, let's go there. Yeah, we'll go to that in a minute. I'm sorry. Matthew chapter 1. Uh, today, you know, it's the Christmas season, right? We all know about Joseph and Mary. The inn at Bethlehem. The manger, the angels, the shepherds, the star, and the wise men. Amen. We all know about that. You see it on Christmas cards. We have it displayed here. You just can't miss it. And that's a wonderful part of the story that we remind ourselves about Jesus every year. It's just a wonderful part of the Christmas story. You know, but a lot of people around this time of the year, and I was just talking about this with my wife yesterday, they get a spirit of melancholy. Depression, downheartedness, and, it, and it, there can be, you know, they, they think about where they might have been, uh, why they haven't gotten there yet. People think, does God really care about me? People's lost loved ones. I've come from a bad background. Can God use me? How many of you, I mean, you all understand that? You all been there, done that? And we think about all sorts of things go through our minds during the holidays, which really should be the most rejoicing time of the year because the Savior's coming into the world. Well, this morning, I, I believe the Holy Ghost wants to set some people free. Uh, and you'll find out because God, you know, God is not looking for perfect people. He's really not looking for perfect people. I don't know if I was watching something on the news last night or this morning, and they were actually talking about Donald Trump. And they were saying that, I think it was a Catholic priest, if I'm not mistaken, he said, you know, God's not necessarily looking for the perfect leader. He's looking for someone who's going to get America back to where it should be. And he, said, and he was saying, Donald Trump, might, people might not like some of the things Donald Trump has done in his life. But he goes, God, and I said, that's the sermon I preached. Imagine that guy stealing my sermon. And you know, Catholic priest a bit. That was to show you. But anyway, God's not looking for perfect people. Dear Jesus, if he was, I wouldn't be here. 
you know? But, but and so I, 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 he's looking for people who are available. He's looking for availability, not perfect. All right? In two weeks, it, it's going to be Christmas Day, and we're going to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, and I love that. And as I mentioned above, we all know about Joseph and Mary and the manger and everything like that. But there's more to the story of Jesus. You know, and it's often overlooked. It's obscure. It's buried in Matthew's geology. And leading up to the birth of Christmas are four women. Tamar, Ruth, Rahab, I thought I forgot, huh? And Bathsheba. All right. These four women, they're buried in the genealogy of Jesus. Let's just read that. Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac begot Jacob, Jacob begot Judah and his brothers, Judah begot Perez and Serna by Tamar, underline Tamar, all right, Perez got Herzon, Herzon begot Ram, Ram begot Abinadad, Abinadad begot Nashon, Nashon begot Solomon, Solomon begot Boaz by Rahab, circle that, okay, Boaz begot Obed by Ruth, circle that. Obed begot Jesse, Jesse begot David the king, David the king begot Solomon by her who had been the wife of Uriah, circle that, that's Bathsheba. Four names, Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, Bathsheba. In no other genealogy, in the word of God, do you find four women's names mentioned. It's just not there. I challenge you to go check it out. They're not there. And people don't get excited about genealogies. You know that because when you read Genesis and all those shit, you always skip over the genealogy. Because there's just nothing exciting about them. I happen to like to study the geologies because there's a lot of information. Genealogies because there's a lot of information in those. You know, especially like Methuselah. You know, his name meant, after I die, then the flood. We kind of like slip over that one. But it tells us a whole lot that something big was going to happen. So we kind of skip over the geologies, genealogies. And, uh, and, and so, but there's something unique about the inclusion of this one. Because uh, it, it wasn't customary, first of all, for a woman to be in ge genealogies. As a matter of fact, women had little or no legal rights at all back in that day uh, and were merely a possession of their father or their husband. Okay? Uh, a matter of fact, the Jewish men in their regular morning prayers would say something like this. They would thank God that they weren't a Gentile, a slave, or a woman. Some of these women out there, these activists today, they have a really rough time back then if they were living. But consider, we have these four women, Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, and Bathsheba, all ancestors of Jesus, every one of them. And Matthew was inspired by the Holy Spirit to put them in there to tell us something very specific, okay? Because no matter how you're feeling today, no matter how downhearted you might be, no matter how depressed you might be, no matter how useless you might seem, God has a plan for your life. No matter where, I don't care if you were a prostitute, a hooker, a drug addict, a crack addict, a crack whore, I don't care what you were in your life, God has a plan for you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The first one we run across there is Tamar. She, she was married to one of the sons of Judah. Her husband died, leaving her child. His custom was she married his brother. That was the custom of the day. He died too, leaving her childless. Judah promised her to wait for his youngest son, but I don't really think he had any intention of letting her marry him because this woman was bad luck. <laughs> you know? 
but then Tamar posed as a prostitute and had a sexual intercourse with Judah, her father-in-law, and another one of Jesus' ancestors, Perez, was born from that act. The second one, Rahab. We all know Rahab. Rahab the harlot. You know, there's a difference between a prostitute and a harlot. A prostitute does it because they need money. That's it. It's their job. That's their way. Of, a harlot, she's just out to have a good time, and she can make some money out of it. She will, but money's not it. She's the one who wants to ruin marriages. She's like the adulterous woman. Okay? But... You know, but there is a difference between them. But she was she was the Canaanite woman, okay? But she came to recognize, and she was a harlot, she came to recognize Jehovah as the true God and saved the Hebrew spies when they went into Jericho through faith. And she found favor, and I love this, the favor of God and became part of God's covenant people. And she said, the Lord your God, he is God of heaven above and on the earth beneath. And, you know, there's a book out called The Scarlet Cord. And she dropped a rope down, a scarlet cord down, so that they could escape. And they, so that supposedly symbolizes the blood of Jesus. The blood covenant. And uh, so, and in any event, she, later on, she's even mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11, Rahab. Now, she wasn't even a Jew. And yet, she's in the, the heroes of faith. She married, she's mentioned in James, chapter 2. Rahab married an Israelite called Salam. And they had a son named Boaz, and, and who, who gets married to a woman named Ruth. And Ruth wasn't Jewish. Okay? But, in any event, Rahab becomes an ancestor to Jesus. And according, if you read uh, rabbinic tradition, she's an ancestress to eight of Israel's prophets, including Jeremiah. And you think you're no good. Seriously. Just an attitude. People have this pea brain attitude of what they think about themselves. So we, we know the story. So uh, Rahab was the right wife. Their son married uh, Ruth, Boaz. You know the story of Naomi and Ruth. Ruth, you know, Naomi was going back to Bethlehem where she came from. Ruth says, I'm going with you. She says, no, you go to your people. She says, no, I want to serve your God. She goes there. She's poor. She meets Boaz, who is rich, and they get married. So now she's in the genealogy of Jesus. Are you listening? Amen. And she was an outcast. She was despised and outcast, Ruth. Uh, the Moabites and the Amorites had their origin through the incest with Lot's two daughters. When Lot got drunk and they had sex with their father and they had kids, that's where the Moabites and the Amorites came from. And, 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 and they weren't even allowed into the Jewish nation because of that sin that took place with Lot. But yet Boaz marries this woman and she's in the genealogy of Jesus. And then the last one we have is Bathsheba. You know about Bathsheba. She had an adulterous affair with David. Caused her husband to get killed. Uriah. Dead. So you have four women. Four women. Outcasts. Outsiders. Very colorful backgrounds. A prostitute. A harlot. An outcast. And an adulteress. All in the genealogy of Jesus. Amen. Think about it. Think about what I'm talking about. All right? And he didn't cover it up. The Bible says he didn't cook candy coat it. He brought these women out. And, you know, I think about it. Uh, and it's amazing. 
when I think about it, he didn't mention respectable women like Sarah, Rebecca, Leah, Rachel. No, he mentions Tamar, Ruth, Rahab, and Bathsheba. We want, you know, we'd want to cover that up. Dear God, don't let them know we had these kind of people in our life, in our family. There's a, a commentator's name is William Barclay. He says, if Matthew had ransacked the pages of the Old Testament for improbable, more questionable, or unlikely candidates, he could have not discovered four more unbelievable ancestors for Jesus Christ. But surely there is something lovely in this. Here at the very beginning of the gospel, we're giving a hint of the all-embracing width of the love of God. God can find his servants, servants among those from whom the respectable, traditional people would shudder away in heart. And, you know, and I believe it's the reason why he put them in there. To bring that out, to demonstrate the awesomeness of God, the great mercy of God, the great grace of God, and the great love of God that God has towards people. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. All right? It doesn't matter where you're from. What matters is where are you going? It doesn't matter what you've done. It matters what you're doing. I enjoy the trees and the lights. Trust me, you should come to my house. There's enough. To... JCP and L are going to be happy. You know? But the beauty of the Christmas tree is not found in any of that. It's found in the eternal fact that God demonstrates his own love towards us while we were yet still sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. See, not based on what we've done. It's based on what his character is. And all through history, God has sought after us. Even when our attitudes and our actions were really unlovely, okay? We were against him. He was for us. When we were at our very worst, God was for us. And he gave us his very best. His very absolute best. So the good news is you were once without Christ, but now you are. You, you were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the common covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in this world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were far off are brought near by the blood of Christ. Don't you love that? So I look at these four women. When you think about it, Jesus came from a line of real imperfect people. Amen. He was perfect, but the line he came through wasn't. Mar they're all Mary's side of the family. You do know that. Just saying. <laughs> But yet, he, Jesus, God still brought him into the earth. That's so amazing. He's our peace. See, Jesus broke down this wall of separation. We were outsiders, now we're insiders. Okay? We were rejected, now we're accepted in Christ. Those who have been put down are now lifted up. Those that were cast out are now brought in. Those that were forsaken are embraced. No, See, it doesn't matter how bad we were or what we've done. It does not matter one bit. And we have to get past it. I think of the, I think of the prodigal son. I just think, you know, I was thinking about him last night and today. You know, just left, live a wild life. But yet, you know, his father represents God. Amen. And no matter how bad he was, his father was there waiting for him because he loved him. Even 
I believe, and this is only me, I can't give you scripture. If the kid did the same thing to his father, his father still would have been waiting for him. Amen. You know? His father didn't stop him. His father let him go. We talk about tough love, you know? I, so I, I agree with it to a certain extent, but then on the other hand, I, I don't know. If this kid's father was waiting for him to come home. He didn't stop him. You know, we, we want to try to stop, you know, and I think that's where the love, tough love thing gets kind of confused, like throw them out. No, let them go on their own. Let them do what they're going to do, but always be there for them to come back. Amen. That's the, I, I, and I'm starting to see a, a more vivid picture of that, you know, which puts <laughs> me at odds with a lot of people when I do that, but that's, I don't really care. I'm the one standing up here. They're not. Anyway. I'm the one who sits at home all day long studying and reading. But yeah, there is a tough love. I'm not going to do anything to stop you from wrecking your stupid life. I'm not going to help you wreck your life. And that's what God did. He said, I'm not going to stop you. I'm not going to run. I'm not going to stop you. I'm not going to help you. I'm not going to give you the money or the means to do it. But when you finally start licking the dust and humble yourself, I'm here. Amen. Hallelujah. That's tough luck. All right. That was just an extra. Oh, God. I sound like I'm from Oklahoma. <laughs> So what we have going on here, there's no more Jew or Gentile. We see that. There's no more male or female, because we're all equal in the eyes of God. There's, there's no barrier between the Satan and the sinner. Uh, there was a story, you know, we need to be careful as Christians. Here's what we do as believers. Christian people, good people. I won't even say Christians, I'll just say good people. They get a prideful and self-righteous attitude about things. You know, look at them. And we just, I'm saved. Look at them, smelly people. We get that way. Don't say you don't. Well, there was an example of a preacher got in an elevator with three drunks. And, and when you get into this, you know, they reeked the alcohol, the, their behavior and language was bad. And the pre preacher, who himself at one time was a, led a, kind of like a wild life, and, and he, he got indignant and judgmental about these guys in the elevator. Because they were drunk and they were cursing and using all kinds of colorful metaphors, you know. And, and, and the Holy Spirit spoke to his heart and said, the only difference between them and you is me. Don't you ever forget it. When you see somebody who you think isn't worthy, just think the only difference between you and them is Jesus. So we can all have a hope. So I love that story, you know. I, about those four women. I read that genealogy every time I read Matthew. And I look at those women and I'm thinking, what was God thinking by putting them in there? Nobody picks up on it. You just think it's the cute part of the Christmas story, you know what I mean? They were, the, they were bad. Well, we consider them bad people. If you were Italian, you'd call them boutons. <laughs> For those Italians among us. Get her out of here. Don't invite her over for Christmas, that bouton. I don't want to know nothing. <laughs> Jesus puts her in the genealogy. Go figure that out. Go logically try to figure that out with some philosopher. Can't, because God doesn't think like we think. 
God is in us. God loves everybody. Everybody gets a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Amen. They keep getting a chance until they die. Amen. Everybody. Everybody. Amen. Who are we to say, well, this is your last chance. That's it. That's over. You're out. Amen. God keeps giving them chances. Amen. Boy, that just goes so far against our human nature. We just want to kick them to the curb and say, you know what? Forget about it. But God says, no, you got another, you got to keep getting a chance till you kill yourself. Yeah. And your chance, that's when your chances run out. But we have hope. If God can embrace a Tamar, if he can embrace a Ruth, a Rahab, a Bathsheba, what makes you think God can't embrace you? Amen. What makes you think you're not good enough? Yes, so you're saying good, then God is, you know, he can deal with them, but he can't deal with me. I'm the worst thing he ever made. That's not true. You know, it says here, uh, Paul says this. I'm going to read it out of the uh, in First Timothy. Paul's writing to Timothy, and he and he's in the New Living Translation says, "I thank, I am thankful, I am to Christ Jesus, our how thankful I am to Christ Jesus." Our Lord for considering me trustworthy and appointing me to serve him. Even though I used to scoff at the name of Christ, I hunted down his people, harming them in every way I could. But God had mercy on me because I did it in ignorance and unbelief. Paul was another one. Moses killed somebody. Peter was a knucklehead. Are you hearing me? There's no need, need to be downtrodden today. Amen. Thinking about what took place in 2016. Friend, you aren't strong enough, smart enough. You're not super person to go back and change it. Come on, come on. You can't do it. I had a pretty turbulent year ourself. I can't go back and undo it. Do you know that? And once I settled that fact in my life that I can't undo 2016, I just need to press on to 2017. I need to keep going towards the prize. Because I can't change the past. And we need to... No, so why get bummed out about it? You know, that's my thing, is why sit there and get all discouraged? I can't change it? No, I haven't. But where am I going? That's important. Where am I going? I don't care where I've been. Where am I going? Yeah, hallelujah. Amen. 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 You know, uh, and, and what's you know what the devil will really do in our life is he'll, he'll use shame yeah. to keep us yeah. from humbling ourselves to God. Yeah. You know, he, he's pretty slick that way. Uh, he'll make you ashamed of the things you've done. He'll uh, shame over things others have done to you, all right? People have been abused and abandoned, often internalized, internalized, and they feel inferior and condemned. I'm here to tell you, you're not inferior, you're not condemned, you're precious and valuable before God. I don't care who abused you, what they did to you, listen, God loves you, you're valuable to God. Amen. Why are you letting Satan feed you a bunch of crap? And this is going on the internet, isn't it? <laughs> Too bad. Someone once said this, shame is a spin-off of guilt. We may feel guilty for what we did, but then we become ashamed of who we are. And there should be no shame in your life. Because the greater one lives on the inside of you. And you say amen. amen. I know, you know what, we have groups to help people through these situations. I understand that. But you got to realize the fact that God loves you, man, before you can even begin to get help in a group. Because if you, if you don't believe God wants to help you, you'll go to that group and you'll feel worse when you're out of there. Am I right? That's why. So... We know, we'll bring us to a close this morning, amen? We know that Mary was born of a virgin. 
Uh, Mary, Jesus was born of a virgin, I'm sorry. Anyway, supernatural work of the Holy Ghost. But naturally speaking, he had a genealogy. I mean, it's bad enough David was bad. Abraham, you know. I mean, forget about them. They weren't exactly, the, you know, Jacob, Isaac. You know, they all had their oh, moments. Yeah, yeah, amen. But yet Jesus came through that genealogy. But then he throws in the mix two prostitutes and an adulteress and an outcast. See, Jesus didn't come through a perfect line of people. He was a perfect person, but he didn't come through perfection. All right? He highlighted, and so he wanted us to know that even though Jesus didn't come from a perfect line of people, he came to save people. He came to make you perfect. Think about it. He came from a fallen people, an imperfect people, to come into a world of sinners, to save them. That's what Christmas is about, man. I like, you know, my wife said, you know, right after church today, I'm going on Christmas shopping. I said, all right, well, praise the Lord. I'm going home. <laughs> I'd rather Christmas shop for my computer. It's so much easier. Drink a latte. You know what I mean? He came down to break the wall of separation. You know, we're one. We're one in forgiveness. We're one in righteousness. We're one in acceptance. And we are one in Christ. No matter your age, no matter your sex, no matter your nationality, we're one in Christ. Amen. No matter if you're a man or a woman, we're one in Christ. And you know what? I have a friend of mine who used to be was from Missouri. He says, and there ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen. He used to send me an email and he used to he, he used to go, I love you. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. <laughs> so we're one. And there's nothing you can do about it. So get over it. And start loving your brothers and sisters in the Lord. Instead of ridiculing them, mocking them, making fun of them, love them. And if you feel like a loser this morning, I'm here to tell you, you're not. <laughs> and if you think you are, you're blaspheming God. God says there's now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And if you're in Christ Jesus, there's no condemnation in your life. You should be the happiest people on planet Earth this morning. Amen? Let's bow our heads this morning. He says, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If you're not in Christ, you're full of condemnation. But if you're in Christ, you need to change the way you think. There's no condemnation for those that are in Christ. <coughs> so while you're here, and the music ministry is coming up here, let me ask you this question. If you're not in Christ Jesus and you want to be in Christ Jesus, it's real simple. You have to ask Jesus to come into your heart. You know, it's not rocket science. It's faith. It's humbling yourself. Saying, Lord, here I am. I can't do it in my own. I tried to do it in my own. I can't do it in my own. I need, I need you in my life. I need you to fill this hole in my heart that I have. That's what Jesus wants to do. Is fill that, make it, make it closed up and whole. Then you're one in Him. 
we're one together. And if you're here this morning and you've never received Jesus as your Savior and you want to receive him, you say, Lord, hey, I, I, I want to become born again. I, I want you in my life. I don't know what to do. All you need to do right now is slip up your hand and we'll pray with you this morning. You just need to slip it up and say, God, I surrender to you. And he will take you on the greatest journey of your entire life. I promise you, it will be a, an exciting adventure with twists and turns and loops in the roller coaster and just all kinds of great things. And you'll be hanging on, your hands will be, you'll be screaming, ah! But you know what? In the end, you come to the stop, man, and you feel good. Thank you, Jesus. Wow, that didn't convince you, didn't it? We got to really beat you up. Jesus loves you. God, I am so glad. I got a sneak peek at the new roller coaster that are putting in Casino Pier. And, it, and, I, and I thought about, like, that's, that's like getting born again. You got all these twist hills go up, come down, twist, turns, it's got loops in it. I'm going, that's what life. But man, when you're in Christ, that's great. Yeah, hallelujah. You can't fall. <laughs> you, can't, you can't fall out. Amen. Can't fall off. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah, hon.